models are very useful throughout science and they're also very useful models in HCI. But before we jump into specific models, we first have to understand what models actually are. And we will also try to get a rough idea about the types of models that we have in HCI. So what is actually a model? Well, a model is a representation of a phenomena and it enables me to either understand the phenomena in a better way or helps me to understand how the phenomena will develop in the future. So we can use models to make predictions about something, about the phenomena. But if you look into Google and search for model, we would typically find something else. We would typically find something that more looks like this, right? So this is a fashion model, but even fashion models somehow fit under this umbrella of a model. A fashion model is a representation of me and it helps me to make predictions about how I look into, let's say, these shoes. And well, this is very useful if I'm interested in buying these shoes because then I can use the model to understand how they look on me. But typically, if you are in a lecture, we would think about other types of models. You would more think about models that maybe look like this or describe phenomena like this. We have planets, they move around the sun, and now we want to predict how they move around the sun or even that they move around the sun. And there are models that describe that a planet moves on an ellipsis around the sun. And this is very useful and makes, enables us to make good predictions about the movement of planets. But this is actually not the case. So they don't move on this ellipsis around the sun, but the sun and the planets, they move around a joint center of gravity. And if you feed this into our model, so if we update our model and improve it, then we get a new one and the new model actually enables us to make better predictions. And what we can learn from that is that no model is ever perfect. There is always a way to come up with a better model that makes even better predictions. But that doesn't mean that the simple model wasn't useful. Well, it's still useful and, and makes valid predictions. Maybe they can be more precise, but then again, the model is also very simple, so it's easy to make these predictions. Let's look at another example. Let's say we have a model that describes how the clouds move on the sky. And if you have such a model, that can be very helpful in order to make predictions about how the weather will be in 10 minutes, an hour, tomorrow, because then we know how the clouds move and if it's sunny or not. But this type of model is not very useful if you want to make predictions about how the climate evolves over a longer period of time. So how warm will it be on the surface in, let's say, 10 years or 100 years? And then having this model for the clouds isn't very helpful because, well, the precision of the model that degrades very rapidly. So maybe the, the prediction is very precise for the next 10 minutes or hour or next day, but it's not very precise if you look for a month or a year or even 10 years. So then the model becomes useless and we need another type of model. So for example, a climate model. And if you have a climate model, then well, we can make better predictions for 10 or 100 years, but the climate model doesn't help us to make predictions about the weather in an hour. So all models are useless for most phenomena. So the cloud model doesn't help us in human computer interaction. It doesn't help us for climate. But for this one thing, it is very useful. So good models are useful or help us to understand specific questions, but they're useless for most of the other questions. So models are representations of phenomena that help us to understand how something works or how it will work. They're never perfect there will always be a better model for specific questions. Models are useful for specific phenomena, but while they are useless for most of the other phenomena. In human computer action, we have a wide variety of models, and often we don't even know that these are models. So the question is, well, can you think of phenomena that 
that we could model in HCI. Well, as I said, there are a large number of models. Um, one example are prototypes, and prototypes are completely valid models. They are representations of the final system, and we build them to better understand how the final system will behave or how users will interact with the final system. They are clearly not the final system because they are prototypes, but they help us to understand this phenomenon, the final system, in a better way. So they are perfectly valid models. They are widely used in HCI, but we will cover that somewhere else. Another example of something that we don't cover are conceptual software architecture models. The most prominent example is probably the model view controller model. And all these types of models, they help us in a similar way to prototypes to build better systems. But they are not models of the user, they are models of the system. So we will also cover that somewhere else. Then something that's closer to what we will do here are mental models. Mental models are models that form in the user's head. And they're models of our system. And when we design systems, we want to influence this type of model. We want to influence what users believe about our system, how they form their opinion and their well, model about the system. But we want to, well, even though we want to influence that, we cannot develop that. Um, so we also cover that somewhere else. So what do we actually cover in this block? Well, we look at task, and you can think about that in an in increasing complexity. Tasks that users perform with our systems, and we would like to understand maybe how fast they are, how good they are, how many errors they make, what they think about it. So we want to predict how users interact with the system, or we want to predict how users behave when they interact with the system. Well, and we can think about task complexity, starting with very, very basic tasks, things like pressing a simple button. And this is so omnipresent in human-computer interaction because there are so many buttons, icons, things that you find on smartphones, on tablets, on desktop computers, even on smartwatches. You have things that, well, I can click on them. And so there are dedicated models for that that help us to understand how long does it actually take. There are more complex tasks, things like filling entire forms. And again, we have models for that that describe how long does a person need to fill this form for a specific task. And we can even go more abstract. We can try to model how people interact with the entire systems. And if we go along this path, models become more and more complex and often less and less precise. But even if you have these very, very broad tasks, models can still help be helpful in order to make predictions about well, our system and the user and how they interact with each other.